back here. So today I wanted to talk about something a little personal to me, right? Something I haven't really talked about very much. But first, please remember to like and subscribe, share my videos with a friend, family member, someone that you know is interested in becoming a developer. It'll help the YouTube algorithm push my video out to a wider audience and it'll be much appreciated. So in this video, I'm going to talk about something that is very personal to me, something that I don't really talk about very often. Um, yes, you read the title correctly. So I dropped out of high school, guys. This was back in the days where I probably thought I wasn't all that smart, where I thought, eh, I'm just bombing out, might as well just quit, right? Um, I was in 12th grade. I think I had a couple of semesters left to go. So I was probably about halfway through 12th grade. Um, I was taking, I was taking a 10th grade class, right? Um, which is kind of weird, but I was taking two English classes. I was taking a 10th grade English class and I was taking a 12th grade English class. And really these days I'm actually good at English, but I don't know why I needed that. I think it's just because I didn't really do much in school. I didn't apply myself. I was just, I found it boring. So I pretty much always got the F honor roll, right? From elementary school all the way through 12th grade, I pretty much bombed out every single year. Um, I even failed fourth grade. I failed fourth grade um, because I think I was always an in-school suspension. I was one of the few elementary school students that was always in trouble because I was the class clown. I wanted to make people laugh and always talking during class. It was class disruption. Teacher didn't want to do anything with, have anything with me. So they would send me out to the, to the principal's office. And it was kind of weird. I can get us this real quick. Um, nobody was really ever in trouble other than me in, in elementary school. But what, it was kind of a weird setup. I was almost like I was imprisoned. So we had the main entrance of the building. We had an area in the principal's office where it was surrounded by glass, sliding glass doors, like a cube. It was a cube and around each side were sliding glass doors, like how if you're going out to uh, out on your porch or something, right? So big sliding glass doors, see through completely. And on one side, psh, open it, close it. Another side, psh, open and close it. Another side, psh, open and close it. And then the wall, there was a wall where the desks were. There's two desks or two little cubicles. And then there was sliding glass door on this side, sliding glass door on this side, sliding glass door on this side. And I was in there with all the sliding glass doors closed. And it was just me. And I was in there all day. And as a kid, an eight hour day feels like, it felt like a 20 hour day to me because I was so bored in there. It was like no one to look at, no one to talk to. Um, sometimes they didn't even give me work to do. So I would just sit there and twiddle my thumbs. And it was, it was a hard childhood with that. And I was in trouble all the time. I don't know what, I mean, I guess I had too much energy. I had a really hard time sitting in my desk. I was bouncing off the walls, bouncing off the walls. I just had way too much energy and I didn't know how to contain it. Both of my sisters, they did great. They, they got A and B on a roll their entire K through 12, right? But me, it was just, I had a lot of energy and the teachers didn't know what to do with it. I didn't know what to do with it. So that's how they solved that problem is they said, hey, let's send them to the principal's office. And I just sat uh, in trouble all the time. But that's backstory. Middle school, same thing. I mean, K through 12, I literally, I didn't, I didn't find much interest in doing schoolwork. I like socializing. I like talking to people. I like making jokes and goofing around. But I found work, schoolwork to be boring. And in hindsight, I wish I liked it. I wish I applied myself, but I didn't. That wasn't the story for me at the time. Um, anyway, going on, middle school. Didn't do the greatest either. I got plenty of Fs. I got in trouble all the time. I got suspended from the school bus for throwing paper balls. I got, um, I got suspended from school, out of school suspension before. I've got in school suspension in middle school. Um, I've been every kind of suspended you can think of. And I got, as a little kid, I was a troublemaker, I suppose. I don't know. I, I, I don't think I was, I wasn't really a troublemaker though. I wasn't a troublemaker. I didn't like bully people. I didn't fight people or anything. It was more like just me 
flapping off at the mouth a lot. I would curse a lot. I would flap off at the mouth. I looked at adults as if they were my um, equal. I looked at them as if they were my equal. Um, because the relationship I had with my parents, I could pretty much say whatever I want. I could curse at home. I could talk to them like they, we were equals. So at school, I did the same thing to my teachers. And suffice it to say, it didn't really work out too well. Um, let me get my coffee here. Gotta have coffee. Um, anyway, school, I did, I did bad. Um, high school, I did just as bad too. I, I was in trouble. I, um, I didn't do my schoolwork. And then they thought I was dumb because I didn't do my schoolwork. They put me in like remedial class too. Um, for math, I think, and then the 10th grade English class at one point, because they thought I was dumb. But really, I wasn't dumb. I just didn't do the work. Like, my dad and my parents used to take away my Xbox when I was a kid. And then I would start magically making good grades, right? For like, one progress support. I could do, I could hold it together just enough for the progress support where I would get A's and B's. And then as soon as they give me my, uh, my console back, I would start just, all right, and start bombing out. Progress report, I did good. By the time this report card came around, it was straight Fs again, Fs, Ds, Fs, Ds. Probably the only reason I got Ds was because the teacher felt bad, I don't know, because I literally didn't do any work. I'm not proud of this, but I'm just trying to give you guys a glimpse into my backstory, right? Because today I'm a senior, senior software engineer and I'm doing really well in my career. And, um, and I've learned a lot, but I like to learn things that, that I'm interested in. I like to have control, right? And as a kid, I felt like I was out of control and I had no control. And since I couldn't, I guess, determine my own fate or I couldn't, I couldn't like choose what I wanted to learn as a kid, I was just like kind of forced to learn whatever they wanted to teach me. I felt like, nah, I'm not gonna do that. I don't wanna do that. And there was other things going on outside of school and my my home life that, um, that were rough, right? I got bullied as a kid. I got bullied a lot um, and different things like that. So I think that might have a may have attributed to me just acting out in school, I suppose. So, I mean, I didn't have the, the picture-perfect upbringing, right? But I'm still a success today, right? I'm, I'm a success today. Teachers probably never would have thought that I would, I would be able to do what I'm doing now. But I am. And I've been doing it for seven years now, working as a developer. Seven full-time years uh, working for companies. And everyone, I've always gotten along great with employees. I've always been able to connect with fellow coworkers on a personal level, and and um, I've never had a problem with any employee that I worked with ever, right? Um, and things that were once um, cons to me, or teachers would look at as like a negative thing, have turned into very positive things in the real world in my working environment, right? I'm allowed to talk in my work environment. I'm not. I don't have to sit there with my mouth closed and not talk. Um, so I guess the teachers were trying to do what they could, the best they could, but it was kind of scarring to me as a child, especially in elementary school. I think that's kind of what set up the foundation. It was just very, very rough years. I think in third grade is probably around when I started actually getting in trouble. Yeah, third grade. Um, another thing I didn't mention was in second grade, so I was born left-handed, so I'm naturally left-handed. They actually forced me to write with my right hand. So I grew up writing with my right hand. And so I had a bad experience with that as a kid. But at the age of 21, I retaught myself to write with my left hand. All I did was, I'm only gonna write with my left hand now, because I still threw with my left hand and stuff. But I was like, I'm gonna reclaim my left hand dominance, right? So I've only been writing with my left hand for the last decade now, and that's pretty much I, I can write with both, which is good in college. If my hand was tired, to switch it over to the other one. That's a tangent. I have reclaimed my dominance with that, but that's a tangent. Um, so, high school. Got in trouble, got Fs, 
It was in a couple of remedial classes. I think they even put me into class with like, yeah, I was in some remedial classes, right? It, it felt bad. They even put me in like an anger management class too, and I was not an angry kid, but they, it was some weird stuff, man. I'm glad I got through all of that. Um, in hindsight, if I could go back, you know, I would do it different. I would try to focus. I would try to do my homework. I would try to listen to the teacher. I would try to get the most I could out of school because my mindset now is complete 180 from then when it comes to learning. I absolutely love learning. Um, I would learn about any subject. I'm fascinated by any subject now. But I think part of it is me getting to teach my own, myself whatever I'm interested in. I love self-learning and I love communicating with, with other people on the subject and trying to better myself that way, right? Um, but that side, I was in 12th grade, back to, back to the start of this video. I was in 12th grade, I quit school. I got a GED, right? So I decided, uh, I think it was like, I was doing like after school stuff where I had to make up some credits in 12th grade. And I was just tired of doing that. And then um, about halfway through 12th grade, I think, I don't know how I convinced my parents this, but but I was like, I'm just gonna get my GED, can I quit? And for some reason they said yes. I actually don't even know why they said yes. Maybe because they knew how many credits I had to make up. But I quit. I didn't even study for the GED. And then I passed it first try somehow. I don't even know how I did that. Did not even study a single minute for the GED and I passed at first try. And then I was starting college because I, for some reason in my head, I'm like, oh, let me start college immediately after I did that. And I was already starting college while the people that I was with in school were still in 12th grade trying to finish up 12th grade. Don't even ask me how that worked out, but, but I actually started college and then I quit college. I was bombing out in college, no surprise, right? And then I took a long break from college. Um, I'm not going to tell you my whole life story. That's kind of in a separate video where I say how I became a developer, but I tried different things. I, um, after I quit college, I worked in restaurants. I worked as an automotive technician for a year. Um, I worked as an electrician. I worked, um, doing handyman stuff. I worked doing some like computer repair stuff. I tried a lot of different jobs because I wanted to see what I would like. And I was just kind of taking time to play around with, with who I was, I suppose. And then I started on my developer journey, which I cover in how I became a developer video. Um, I have a couple of those. So it's crazy. But the point of this video is if I can do it, I really believe that you guys can do it. I do. Um, you, it comes from within though. You need to believe in yourself. You need to have the confidence to say, I can do this. You need to have that self-belief. I promise you guys can do it if you have that self-belief and keep on the track of trying to learn something new every single day to further the goal of becoming a developer, right? Um, but once you become a developer, it doesn't stop there. You need to continue learning. It gets even harder. So once you become a developer, things do get even harder because you're working with other developers. You're working with people that rely on you and that ask you questions and they hope that you have an answer, you know? And if you haven't been there and done that, it's sometimes it's hard for you to come up with an answer for them. But that's pretty much the moral of this video. Um, hope it's been useful. Hope it kind of gives you a little bit of motivation to know that, hey, you probably graduated high school or maybe you didn't graduate high school. Um, but either way, I just wanted to tell my story, maybe just out of hope that it might be useful for you all. Um, please like and subscribe. I have some more videos coming out soon and see you later.